On the first week of Advent, we begin with an invitation. Because an invitation is where everything begins. It's where everything starts. I'm sure that there was a time in your own childhood when you were not invited someplace you wanted to be. And you know from that experience that invitation is everything. Being invited means that we are a part of something, that we are a part of a community, that we are a part of a group of people that love us. And this is inherently a part of who we long to be, not only as Christians, but simply as human beings. The first year that I served in the local church, one of my church members offered me an invitation to come to a gingerbread house making party at her home. And I didn't quite know what to expect. I was just expecting a few people to gather together. And when I arrived, her entire house had been arranged to make space for all of the family and friends that were there to make gingerbread houses. I was inspired by this one invitation. And I was so impressed by this event that that year I decided I was gonna start making gingerbread houses with my nieces as an annual Christmas tradition. A few years ago, as my nieces started to get older, I asked my oldest niece, who was nearing her teenage years, do you still wanna make gingerbread houses? Is, is that something that you're too old for? And she looked at me with the sass that only a 13 year old can muster and said to me, Aunt Tara, of course we're making gingerbread houses at Christmas. That's what we do at Christmas. That one invitation so many years ago has become a part of an incredibly valued family tradition in my own family. And all it took was one invitation. We are invited to be active participants in the kingdom of God. And we are invited to be a part of what God is doing in the world and here and now. In our scripture today from the prophet Jeremiah, we see that Jeremiah is offering an invitation for the people to continue to be ongoing participants in kingdom building for God's kingdom. Jeremiah is writing at a time during the exile and all of our Old Testament passages during this entire season will be regarding the exile. Keep in mind that when Israel was established for the first two kings, three kings, when Israel was established, it was one nation. And after the reign of King Solomon, the nation divided into the Northern Kingdom of Israel and the Southern Kingdom of Judah. The Northern Kingdom of Israel was, was invaded by the Assyrian armies the southern kingdom of Judah was eventually conquered by the Babylonian armies, but this was several hundred years later. And so all of the prophets that we read during this season are writing about a time of exile in which the people from the southern kingdom of Judah were sent into exile into Babylon. And that means that throughout all of this text, we find this longing for home, this longing for a place that they can call their own, a place where they will be safe and cared for. In our scripture today from Luke, we are a little bit surprised. A lot of times folks walk into that first Sunday after Thanksgiving and they expect to hear about the baby Jesus right away. And instead we hear about signs and the sun and the moon and the stars and these calamities happening. And sometimes people are a little bit taken aback that this is the lectionary text for the first Sunday in Advent. And yet this is also a part of who we are called to be because Christmas hasn't started yet. And this is an invitation to be people of hope, an invitation to be a people who are ready to prepare for the coming of Christ. In the season of Advent, we prepare for the coming of Christ in the past, the present, and the future. So that means that we're preparing for the coming of Jesus in the past, so the baby in the manger. We're preparing for the coming of Christ in the present, so we're preparing for Jesus in our hearts. And we are preparing for the future coming of Jesus when Jesus comes in final victory and we feast together at God's heavenly banquet. We have all had moments when we have been waiting. Waiting is just a part of being human. And there are, but there are two different kinds of waiting. There's active waiting and there's passive waiting. Passive waiting is what we do when we are waiting to hear from the surgeon who is operating on our loved one. 
It's what we do when we are sitting to meet a friend for lunch and they're running late and there's nothing we can do to speed up that process. It's what we do when we are stuck in bumper to bumper traffic and there's nothing we can do to make things go faster. But active waiting is what we are called to during this season. We are called to wait as people who are preparing. Active waiting is what I do when people come to visit my home because there's usually a few things at that last minute that just aren't quite finished yet. Those last elements that need to be set out, those last touches that need to be put into place before our beloved guest arrives. You are offered to be an active participant in the ongoing building of the kingdom of God. And our scriptures this week establish that. And so the question for today is really, how will you be an active participant in building God's kingdom, but also how will you extend that invitation that someone extended to you out into the world? We all know that there are those moments when receiving an invitation is absolutely special and amazing. And there are invitations we receive that can sometimes change our the entire course of our lives. How are you planning on responding to God's invitation to continue to be a part of the building of God's kingdom in this season as we continue to prepare for the coming of Christ? Music